Welcome to Math Mini Lessons. My name is Sarah Fuentes, and in today's lesson, we're going to review how to solve a one step equation. We've been doing order of operation problems since we were in the fourth grade math models and the entire goal of doing order of operations is so that when we get a really complex expression every single person can follow the same series of steps to get the exact same answer uh, when i would do this with fourth graders obviously i wouldn't use numbers like these uh, we would use simpler numbers like three minus four divided by eight times two but i would tell everyone well Think of it as just taking a step at a time to break down a problem and with each step it gets easier and easier. So everyone agrees to do whatever is inside the parentheses first. Everyone agrees to simplify anything with an exponent into a single term. Everyone agrees to do any groupings, multiplying or dividing from left to right. And everyone agrees to combine any terms with adding or subtracting from left to right. And if everyone agrees to do those exact steps and is careful with their numbers, then everyone will come to the same solution. Now that was the goal. And in seventh grade, you can use that same series of steps of order of operations to solve something like this, where we would first go and deal with whatever was in the parentheses. Luckily, there are no exponents. We can skip to the next step. We would multiply or divide. In this case, we're going to divide this section first and then divide at the end. And if there was anything left, we would add or subtract to get to a solution. Even with that, and even though we've been doing this since the fourth grade, we still have adults on Facebook, on Twitter, arguing about how to do problems like this. And every three months it pops up uh, because we still argue about what the perfect step is. Now, we're not going to get into this today. You can actually check if you want to know how to do a problem like this using order of operations, check out my YouTube page and you'll be able to look at it with PEMDAS. What we're going to do today is we're going to think about how to use order of operations and quite frankly, how to use the opposite of order of operations, inverse operations, to retrace our steps and to find the solution for a simple equation. Now, in our last lesson, we talked about expressions. Expressions like this, x plus 8. In this equation, we have two expressions. We have x plus 8 and 12. Both expressions are equal to each other, which is why we have an equation. Because this little equal sign, it tells me that whatever is on this side of the equal sign, this expression, has the same value as this expression. I can't use order of operations because once I get to this simple term, I cannot combine these terms together. They're not like terms. So we're going to use backwards planning. And instead of adding 8, what we can do is we can do as opposite, subtract 8 to get the x by itself. Okay, so that is our goal for today. We're going to see how to use inverse operations to do two things. We want that x by itself. We want it isolated. And we want to figure out what is the solution to, that would make it true. What number can we put in for x that would make this equation true? So let's look at this first example. Here our math goes. Isolate the variable and simplify. In this case, we have a number minus 9 equals negative two. And you can probably do this in your minds. I already know it, but for simplicity's sake, we still want to think of it thoughtfully about what our process is and not just getting the answer. How are we getting to that? We want this number by itself. Unfortunately, that number is being reduced by nine. So we're going to do its opposite. Instead of subtracting nine, what we want to do is add nine. And what this will do is it will cancel out these two nine, this negative nine and positive nine. Why? Because they create a zero pair. I'm adding two opposite numbers, I create zero, which leaves me with only the variable g. Now, before I told you that this is an equation, meaning both expressions have to be equal to each other. So if I added nine to one side, I have to do the same to the other side. That way it stays balanced. If I only kept it on one side, this side would have way more. So just think of the rule, whatever I do to the left, I gotta do to the right. So we're gonna add nine to the other side as well. 
negative 2 plus 9 is going to give us 7. And now this is a simple solution. How do I know? Because there's one term on both sides. It's telling me a number is equal to 7. We're going to actually check this and just validate and make sure this is true. So I'm going to take the 7 and I'm going to put it back in for G into our original expression. G minus 9 equals negative 2. I'm going to take away the G and I'm going to substitute and put in the 7. Now I can combine these terms. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. And negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So this satisfies our equation. It's a valid solution. It is completely balanced. Hit pause so you can jot this down into your notes. We're going to look at another operation together. Again, we're looking at opposites. So in order to solve and isolate, we're going to use opposite operations. So in this case, we had adding and subtracting. In our next example, we're going to have division, which is very, very tricky. That's why I want to work over this one. And we're going to start with the one on the left, which is simpler. We have a number divided by nine. How can I get this by itself? Right now is being divided by nine. So what would this opposite be? divide by 9, I'm going to multiply by 9. So check this out, Math Marbles. Why does this help when I multiply by 9? Well, when I do that, I'm going to actually end up, and I'm going to expand this out so you can see it. I get 9a divided by 9. We know that 9 divided by 9 just gives us 1. So I'm left with only a. And that's what we want. We wanted the A isolated. So again, think about my process. I just did the opposite of what was there. If the number was divided by 9, I did its inverse, which was to multiply by 9. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So I'm also going to multiply this side by 9. And I'm going to have negative 36. Okay, let's move this other A over just a little bit so we actually have it a little bit more together. So negative 36, 36 is equal to A. Let's check our work using substitution. So I'm going to go back to the original equation. Negative 4 is equal to negative 36 divided by 9. Let's see. Well... 30, negative 36 divided by 9 is 4, is negative 4. So this satisfies our equation. It is valid, it is still balanced. They're both equal to each other. I'm both left to right, they're both equal to negative 4. So that's our main takeaway. Anytime you see an operation in a one-step equation, we're going to do its opposite to get the answer. The next one on the right is a little bit tricky, and to be fair, you're not going to see this very often in 8th grade. However, I think it's still important to know, and I want you to see how I work through this problem. The goal is still the same. I still want to get the variable A by itself, and I'm still going to use an opposite operation. So in this case, I have 9 divided by some number gives us negative 4. So 9 divided by the number, so the opposite of dividing by that number is to multiply by that number. So I'm going to multiply this by a. So what is that going to give us? That's going to give us 9a divided by a. And whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. So I'm going to multiply the other side by a as well. So I have negative 4a is equal to 9a divided by a. And just like before, we know that when we have the same numerator and denominator, it's going to equal to 1. So on the right side, a divided by a is just going to leave us with 9. So I have negative 4 times the number is equal to 9. And now this is more familiar. Like I said, this was a trickier one, and you're not going to see this often, but I wanted you to be able to be exposed to it and try this out. So think through. Now I have... My goals are the same. I want this A by itself. I have negative 4 times A gives me 9. 
So what is the opposite of times a? Well, well, I'm sorry, negative 4 times a. So instead of multiplying by negative 4, I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. And that's going to give me a is equal to negative 9 fourths. So we're going to hit pause for a second, Math Marvels. What I would love you to do is actually go back in and plug that in for A, substitute it. Put negative 9 over 4 and see if you get the same answer on both sides of the equation. This one is a little bit trickier, um, but now you have an idea of how to solve at least one-step equations by using the opposite operation and using our math modes. Isolate and get with one term on both ends. Pause here, jot this into your notes, and we will see you in the next lesson, Math Marvels.